Surprise! It's not USCIS officer, officer. It's me, attorney Damien DeNoble. If you had watched this video last week with this guy and wondered, what is it all about? Well then, I'm gonna explain it to you today. We're gonna look at this video and figure out what we can learn from it as people who may have a marriage interview coming up. If that sounds good to you, stick around. Welcome back. My name is Damien DeNoble, and this is Law Great, the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. What were those two videos last week? This video four and video five of the streak. You threw a curveball at us, Damien. You, you tried to be funny, but you're a lawyer. How dare you try to entertain us? You're here to teach us. What is, what is education worthy about those videos? The truth is, there are tips embedded in those videos, but they're not explicitly stated. I, I think explicitly stating things, you know, gets boring, especially if you're trying to put together a YouTube channel. And so what I'm going to do is actually take you through the videos today from last week. Um, I'm going to take you through video four. Tomorrow we'll look at video five from last week. And I, I'm going to tell you what the tips are, right? Because I, I do try to show in this particular case by showing you what not to do um, try to show you some things you should be thinking about as you approach your interview okay so you'll remember that we had this guy who is this guy this is USCIS officer officer he's got a bit of a southern accent and that's just because I myself grew up in the south and moved into the United States uh, USCIS officer officer is is playing it pretty straight in in this one and it's um you know it's a serious situation um he has split up the couple mr adams and and his wife because he suspects there's a marriage fraud issue so so we're, we're not in a in a formal stokes where you come back for two hours but we are in a stokes situation this marriage fraud situation okay uh the main person to look at here though is not the officer who you know, he's playing it pretty straight, although he's beside himself, but it's it's our friend, this guy. Okay, this roguish uh, man here is Mr. Adams. And uh, right off the bat, Mr. Adams gives us uh, a clue as to our first tip. The main thing that's wrong with Mr. Adams, and when I look here, I'm looking at the video, but the main thing that's wrong with, uh, with Mr. Adams in this shot is that he is dressed completely inappropriately for this interview. Uh, it's, it's a small thing, right, in, in, in the large scheme of things, but it's a big thing in the small scheme of, of the marriage interview. Um, wearing a, just a t-shirt, in this case an undershirt, uh, showing excessive jewelry, all of these things kind of conflict with what the USCIS and the immigration system broadly want to see which is which is the mythical model immigrant i'm not saying that's not a racist uh thing that the uscis wants to see uh, i'm not saying it's right but still it's important to dress well and dress appropriately for these interviews at least at least you know uh, you know wearing uh, an iron shirt and not an undershirt something like a collared you know short sleeve shirt is is okay although i like to see people put button downs the other thing is we, we have a piece of jewelry here um, I'm actually kind of being a little blasphemous. This this is a rosary that I have in, in my office. Um, but you know, there's a couple of things wrong with this. Number one, it's a rosary, and so you're 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 kind of you're bringing something else into the equation that the officer asks about, uh, which is your religion. And generally, we want to kind of try to stay neutral. Again, I'm not saying it's right; it's just what we want to do. And number two, it, in this case, let's pretend it's not a rosary. It looks kind of flashy. Um, flashy is good uh, for a lot of things. Flashy might be good when you're running a YouTube channel uh, like me, but it's not good in this scenario. Okay, so let's play it and uh, see if we can, uh, you know, draw out tip number two. All right, let's start with your wife's name. What is your wife's name? I call her Gina. Gina B. Banana Fana Aquafina. 
first of all, like you, I have no idea what accent I'm trying to do. I, I started with something that's like New Jersey, Southern Connecticut light. Um, and I and I ended something that with something that you you, you know you would find a little more in the south. Uh, you know we're we're going in, in, into a little more uh, of some sort of weird accent, and uh, I don't know. But what I do know is that in situations when you're asked questions, saying less is more. And definitely um, in this case, uh, Mr. Adams is not saying less. He's saying more. And, and, and of course, he's being ridiculous. He doesn't even know his wife's name here. He's saying Gina, Gina, Laura. He's also throwing around nicknames. When you answer a question in USCIS, you have to know everything is recorded, right? Everything is being recorded. You have to assume that it is. And anything you say can be a piece of information. So the proper response here, let's assume he knew his wife's name, would have definitely been Laura Adams. But even if he didn't, and he just knew one name, and just had one name that he mainly called her, saying Gina is a whole lot better than Gina, Bina, Banana, Banana, Fafina, blah, 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 because the officer's writing all that down, and that's going to appear in a request for evidence or a notice of intent to deny. And so here, he's saying way too much. The other thing that we want to point out is general mood. So let's, let's, let's play it again here, um, and let's see if we can find tip three. General mood here. The officer doesn't look happy, and uh, Mr. Adams looks a little cocksure, right? He looks a little cocksure. Let's go back to that face. This one. That's a cocksure face. That's a face that apparently doesn't care. Oh, now I'm sounding like the officer doesn't know or doesn't care. Apparently doesn't care that the officer in front of them is is a person and a person an officer has feelings even though they're a bureaucrat they have feelings and they're going to respond to the energy that you give them and this sort of energy can only serve to antagonize the officer so if we're looking at tips one through three you got to dress properly you have to answer things simply and clearly not provide too much but err on the side of too little and this attitude is so so bad what is the better attitude? Smiles. Smile after everything. Why? Because an officer is a person and smiles have been shown scientifically to improve somebody's impression of you. Don't smile like a maniac with those big crazy eyes, but smiling um, has shown to help people trust you. Okay, so that that's the first thing out of this general set of uh, uh, just impressions that Mr. Adams and the officer make. So those are the first three tips. Let's concentrate on the content a little bit. Obviously, you want to take it seriously and you want to know your wife's name. You want to know other things, right, about your partner. Uh, you might you want to know what their immediate family is like. You want to know the names of their siblings. You want to know the names of their children. You just need to know these things. When you don't, that's a red flag. But I want to go forward so I, I just want to concentrate on this one bit that might get lost. Uh, here, the officer says, hey, you swore her name was Laura Adams, okay? You swore to it when you signed the I-130. He uses the I-130, which is the number of the petition for alien relative form, and Mr. Adams doesn't need to seem to know what that is. In fact, the I-130 petition for an alien relative, Mr. Adams? Okay, so I'll let you go back and watch it for the full thing, but essentially Mr. Adams is, doesn't know what the petition for an alien relative I-130 is. He's not familiar with the names of the forms. So, you know, tip number four is you have to be familiar with what you're filing. I know it can get confusing. I filed the I-130 and then I filed the I-485 for adjustment of status. I filed the I-765 employment for authorization document form. Oh, and I applied the I, then I signed the I-131 advanced parole document. Oh, uh, there was an 864 affidavit of support in 864A because I think, you know, my wife's brother also lives in the household and we filed both. That's a lot to remember. It's a lot to remember. That's a lot of numbers. But still, it's important if you're serious about the process to be familiar with those forms because the officer brings them up. You want to know what's being talked about. More to the point, you want to know what's in the form. And Mr. Adams here doesn't even know that. OK, so that's tip four. Know what you filed, know what you signed, 
And that means knowing both the form numbers and the form names and the content in the form, okay? So let's go to our last tip, which is tip five. And for that, we are going to jump to this final kind of section, final confrontation. At this point, the officer is fed up with everything. Officer, officer. One last question before I make a final decision on your case. Mm. When I asked, and I'm looking at my notes here, how you met Laura, you stated, quote, she was cleaning my house and I thought I'd help her. When you said that, Mr. Adams, were you saying that you married Laura to help her with her immigration status? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it's common uh, in interviews for an officer to take notes and then quote back at you what was said earlier in the interview. So in this case, the officer is quoting back something from earlier in the interview before Mr. Adams was split up from his wife. Um, again, that's a common technique. The question here is particularly searing because the officer is making it explicitly known that, hey, I, I think you might have said this because of an immigration violation. What's the best thing to say in this scenario well the best thing when this happens is probably to stop talking say no say i'd like to talk to a lawyer i don't know how to understand that but proceeding with an answer that's jumbled up is not going to work strangely enough uh you can't ask to take the fifth that's a good scared face Strangely enough, you can't do that, right? Uh, you can't take the fifth. And you can't take the sixth because that's not a thing. Uh, but but it is in your best interest to stop talking. So tip five, when things get serious, the officer starts quoting things back at you. Tip five is less is more. Uh, less is more. And probably if that happens, you don't have an attorney, it's probably time to go talk to one because you can expect to see your response to the quote question, the question where the officer quoted you and asked you a question, you can expect to see both of those things on a request for evidence or a notice of intent to um, deny down the line. So that's it. That explains this video. I just want to make things that are entertaining for YouTube. It doesn't seem to make sense to me to keep on giving you the same video you see five other lawyers do. Um, so maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Until then, I hope you can support us. I hope you can subscribe. This is Frontier Tech Law's Law Great channel, the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes.